Well, in my earlier video, we understood what is a circle. Now, let's try to understand what are the different kinds of servers. So once we understand the different kinds of servers, it becomes that much easy for me to uh, explain uh, their different kind of architectures. So uh, there are lots of servers out there, huge number of servers, but I'll just discuss about few so that you get a hang of uh, the servers. Uh, well, uh, file server, that's one kind of server. Uh, obviously, you know, file server uh, is a software. What is a file server? Well, it's a software which manages all the files or the documents. Okay. Uh, so that's as simple as that. Or uh, let's say a print server. A print server is uh, basically again a software. Any server is a software. So print server is again a software uh, which manages all your print requests and everything related to the uh, printing. Okay, so mail server, uh, again, it's a software. Uh, it manages everything related to the mails, like uh, composing a mail, deleting a mail, whatever those mails. So uh, similarly, like this, we have huge number of servers, okay? Uh, proxy servers, uh, uh, domain servers, and um, uh, there are quite a few of them. So uh, the most important thing that I want you to understand at this point of time is the two servers. Actually three servers, but the two servers are important right now. So the first one is the database server. Okay. And the second one is the application server, popularly known as app server. Usually, you know, people, especially software industry people, little lazy. So they wouldn't want to call it by the whole name application server. So they would like to call it as app server. So these are very important two servers that you need to understand. Along with that, there is one more server called web server, but I won't discuss web server at this point of time. But when we're discussing about a three tire architecture, that's when I will discuss about the web server. But right now, let's concentrate on these two servers. One is the app server, which are the application server, and the other one is the web, uh, sorry, database server. So let's start with the database server first. Uh, the database server. So before going into database server, let's try to understand what is a database. The name itself says database. It's a collection of some data, okay? So it is somewhere where all the data is there, okay? So let's let's take some data and put it in an Excel sheet. Uh, when I say some data, uh, uh, let me think. Okay, so let's say you, you, have, you have conducted an exam and you have a, a, a row number uh, the student roll number or the hall ticket number, the student name and the mark secure. So there are 100 students and you have that data. What is that? The hall ticket number or the roll number of that student and you have the student name and you have the mark secured by that student. So of all the 100 students. So you put that data into an Excel sheet and you have saved this Excel sheet. So that's a database. It's as simple as that. You have some collection of the data, right? So uh, similarly, any data you're putting together in any editor, it could be a text notepad or an Excel sheet or a Word document or anything. So you put that data into it and saved it. That's a database. It's as simple as that. So if it is that simple, putting the data into an Excel sheet and all that, it you know, that's called a database, then why do we have this database is called Oracle, DB2, uh, 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 Teradata, uh, and these days we're talking about big data. So why do we need all those kind of databases uh, when as simple as putting that data into an Excel sheet uh, is called database? Uh, well, uh, there uh, it has its own reasons. Uh, I'll give you a very, very simple reason, okay? So you want to pick up a 
the marks of a student with roll number 97. Okay, so if this data is in an Excel sheet, uh, you you would go find, you do a uh, control F and then you say 97 and you try to pull out the data. Since you have only 100 records, it becomes easy, but let's say you have millions of records and you want to pull out some data. It, it doesn't become that easy if you're storing that in an Excel sheet. So that is the reason why you have uh, the softwares like Oracle or DB2 or uh, SQL uh, server. So you have these softwares which actually uh, will help you to uh, insert the data and retrieve the data that you wanted. Okay, and that's the reason why you have all these kinds of databases. So what is a database server? Server is a software, right? So the software which will help you to store the data and retrieve the data is nothing but a database server. Okay, so you took a hardware, a server, a CPU or something like that and you install this software called Oracle or a DB2 or uh, uh, SQL Server or Teradata. This is all software. So, okay, install that on that particular hardware. And now you have this database server. Uh, well, um, some of you, if you still didn't understand, the databases correctly. I'll give you a couple of examples and probably by the end of it you would understand it better. Uh, let's take any application. Let's take our favorite application which you have been taking, the web application which is the Gmail. Okay. You have registered for this Gmail. Okay. Using a username and a password. Let's go back to my username which is kvukta.testingtraining.com and let's say the password is AS the if 7891 let's say that's a username and password with which i have registered once i have registered let's say i have registered today and then tomorrow i'm trying to log in with that username which is kgupta.testingtraining.com with the password asdf7890 since it's a correct password and a username it will allow me to log into that particular gmail so, uh, don't you think this Gmail application is storing this information, which is the username and password somewhere, so that tomorrow when you come back, it is able to remember that, and uh, it is it is able to acknowledge that it's a right username and password and allowing you to log in, which means that it is storing that information somewhere? Yeah. Definitely, yes. So, this information is being stored in the database of Gmail application. So if you're wondering, it's the only username and password the Gmail application is storing? No, it is storing a lot of other information. Uh, while during the registration, let's say you're given your phone number, you've given your name, uh, you're given the other information like questions uh, for some hints, if the password is lost, that kind of questions and answers for that. So all this information is being stored by the Gmail application. Not only this information, uh, like the emails that you have sent, the emails that have been received, let's say, the email that you have received one year back, it is still storing it. If you haven't deleted that email, you can go back and check that email, which you have received one or two years back, which means that it is storing that information somewhere. It is storing it in the database. So, all the information that you see on the Gmail, pretty much all that is being stored on the database. So, uh, if you still didn't understood, let me take another application. Which, let's say, let's go with the railway reservation or railway booking application. In India, it's ircTC.co.in, which is a very popular application. So, what kind of information this this application would store? Well, simple. Uh, again, it's your username, password with uh, which you have registered for that application. It needs to store that in the database. Along with that, all the trains, the, the different uh, destinations or the different uh, uh, stations there where the train would stop, the prices, and uh, it, it has something called booking history, which means that uh, it stores all the five or ten past 
uh, your booking history, all the five to ten uh, transactions or the um, trains that you have booked in the last uh, uh, in the last uh, few months or in a year. So all that information, it is able to pull that information, show it to you, which means that it is storing that information somewhere. Okay, so like this. All every single application has a database and all the data related to that that you will be able to see that on from the front end is stored in the database. So I hope you understood what is a database now clearly and what kind of data it would store. Later on, when we are discussing about different types of architectures, you would better you would understand how this data is being used or retrieved by these applications. Thank you for watching guys, uh, thanks.